Hi, this is Phil Myman. I'm the Libertarian candidate for Congress in Connecticut's 4th Congressional District. I'd like to um, advertise with you guys on Monday and Tuesday. Phil Myman's family immigrated from communist Russia to America in search of liberty, smaller government, and lower taxes. Let's do the radio end. When we came to America in 1980, it was a few months before Ronald Reagan was even elected. And he said a lot of the things that we, as immigrants from a communist country, were running towards. Smaller government, less control from other people over your life. But Americans are less free today than they were 20 years ago, according to Maimon. It's obviously gotten less free as time has gone on. This is more than 30 seconds by itself. Taxes have gone up, regulations have increased, we're fighting wars all the time, halfway around the world. It has to end at some point. There's, uh, electing a Republican or versus a Democrat has not made a difference. So Maimon decided to do something about it. He ran for Congress and went from managing a multi-million dollar hedge fund to running a grassroots campaign with his family. I am libertarian Phil Myman, and I am the only candidate for Congress who unconditionally opposed the war in Iraq initially, who opposes it now, and who has an exit strategy. I would, I would set it down. Myman was recruited for the job by Courtney Huff, Libertarian Party representative in Connecticut's 4th Congressional District. Phil is amazing. He graduated from Harvard with a degree in computer science, an honors degree in computer science, and a master's degree in applied mathematics in three and a half years. In fact, I think Phil's the best candidate I've worked with since 1980 when we had an excellent presidential candidate, Ed Clark, and a little money behind him. Third party candidates rarely raise enough money to realistically compete with the two major parties. Dear Phil, I hope this helps you spread the good word at least. Thank you for running. Sincerely, Cheryl Bryant in Greenwich. That's nice. Maimon raised just about $40,000, while his opponents had two to three million to spend. What it comes down to is recognition, but recognition is built on exposure. So in order to be exposed in the mainstream media, uh, meaning you know electronic media, radio, TV, is money. And if you don't have the kind of financial base that the larger parties do, you can't afford that airtime. You can't get your message into the, the mainstream flow of, of information. And that's really kind of what's tilting um, this political system of ours, is that it's not freedom of speech. I mean, it's a very expensive um, price to get your freedom of speech now. Pollsters say that without strong financial support, third parties aren't worth including in their surveys. Maimon was excluded from the two polls conducted in his district. Monica McDermott is research director for the center where the polls were designed. For third party candidates, I think it starts with institutional support. And to some extent, it's a vicious cycle because obviously they claim that without polling data to demonstrate that they're viable, they can't get the institutional support. And but as pollsters, we rely on seeing some of that institutional support to validate their candidacy enough to actually include them in a survey. Third parties also face the challenge of getting their message out through the press. In terms of explaining to people what we think they ought to know about, our resources are better spent on the candidates who are likely to actually go to Washington and be in office. We can, some of these minor party candidates are very colorful people. They make very good copy. You could write about them, but you, I don't believe you're being fair in serving your readers by devoting a lot of time to what they have to say. I feel like there's probably something I can do right now that will guarantee I win. And it's just a question of juggling it all up here and figuring out what that something is. Despite these obstacles, Maimon's witty ads created some promising opportunities. Yeah, that's why it's Political pundit Tucker Carlson invited Maimon on MSNBC to talk about one of his campaign clips. Hi, so what do you do? I'm running for Congress. Oh, are you a Democrat or a Republican? No. What do you mean? Everyone's a Democrat or a Republican. Not me. 
What are you? I'm a libertarian. You're a librarian? No, I'm a libertarian. You're Joe Lieberman? Not Lieberman. I'm a libertarian. What's a libertarian? A libertarian believes in smaller government, fewer taxes, more freedom. Get out of Iraq. I like all those. Maybe you're a libertarian, too. I'm Phil Myman, and I approve this massage. Pretty funny ad, but Phil Myman is serious when he says it's time for third-party representation in Congress because he believes there's really not a lot of difference between his Democrat and Republican opponents. But can he convince voters in Connecticut's 4th Congressional District, and perhaps across the nation, that the time is ripe for a party rebellion? Joining us now from Stanford, Connecticut, libertarian candidate and the man who approved that massage, Phil Myman. Mr. Myman, thanks a lot for coming on. Oh, my pleasure. There's a... Well, there's a pornographic quality to your ad. Well, uh, thanks, <laughs> I, mean, I, I think. enjoy, uh, but what, is, what does it mean exactly? Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's an indication of this, the fact that the Republicans and Democrats are the same. They pass laws. Any problem you can come up with, real or imaginary, the only solution that Democrats and Republicans can come up with is we need more government. We need more laws. We need people to approve these things, and then it all will be well. It's silly. Has any libertarian ever been elected to Congress? Nope. It's time, isn't it? We're well, about due. Yeah, I, you know what? I think it is time, and you could be the man. Based on Thank your you. ad, I like it. Good luck. Thanks a lot, for what it's worth. Thank Bill you very Lyman. much. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, you guys. Hi. Yeah, doesn't everyone? It's the new style. I'm trying to get out on this. Are you Phil? I am. Yeah, I saw you on Tucker Carlson. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. What's your name? Sorry. A vote for a third party is often seen as a wasted vote. Sally Choney admitted to preferring Maimon over the two major party candidates, but he ended up voting for a Democrat. With control of Congress at stake in the midterm elections, he wanted his vote to go towards helping the Democrats take the House. You don't want to keep wasting your votes on these same guys, the same bozos. I think Phil's a better candidate. But the problem is, with the, it'd be the whole Lieberman, Ralph Nader factor as of this point. Because a one vote for him, a one vote for Lieberman, is a loss for the Democratic candidate, for the Democrats to take back Congress. As election results came in, it became clear that Maimon had no chance of winning. Only about 3,000 people voted for him, just over 1% of total votes cast. I'm sad. I wanted to win. I didn't. Um, I feel like I gave the people of Connecticut and the 4th District a choice. They had a choice for small government. They chose not to exercise that option. America is a great land and it will become greater. It will be free again. Freer. I'd be interested to see how it happens. I'm going to fight for it one way or another, however I can. I don't think there's another country out there with as much depth of feeling for freedom and as much love of liberty as America has. It's just a question of getting rid of the the corrupt government, the big government that's taken its, its place. And it's, it'll be interesting to see how it happens, whether it's through movies or books or TV shows or radio or internet or eventually libertarians winning or whatever. It's going to be an interesting journey.